Good morning everyone, my name is Mina Nancy and I would like to welcome you to the Christ Life Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. If you are watching us for the very first time, you are very welcome and I would like to thank you for joining us in. We don't take your presence lightly. The Christ Life is located in Boyogere at the North Park Plaza opposite UNBS headquarters. You can also get us on our social media handles on Facebook as The Christ Life and on YouTube as The Christ Life Church as well. And as you watch these videos, don't forget to like, share and also subscribe to these videos. We are looking forward to spending the next 45 minutes of praise and worshipping. And I would like to share a verse with you. It's in Psalms chapter 7 verse 17. It says, I thank the Lord for his righteousness and I will sing praise to the Lord, the Most High God. Come on, let's get up on our feet. We are going to jump for our God. Hey!
are going to thank God because of what he has done in our lives. I know everyone is having a testimony. So this dance is to thank God for what he has done. Huh.
worship your name, O oh God. This is our word to you, Lord, to always worship you, Jesus, to always glorify your name, no matter what the situation. We shall always glorify your name, O oh God, because your name is great, your name is power, your name is love, O oh Jesus. We will always magnify your name, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for love. Thank you for your power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow. That was a wonderful moment of praise and worship. I'm sure each one of you received a blessing through this praise and worship. As you prepare to give, to give your tithe, your offering and seed, I'd like us to reflect on Philippians chapter 4 verses 10 to 20. You can read it later on, but it talks more about the joy that we receive from giving. I have a simple question for you. Have you discovered the joy of giving? Perhaps many of us view giving as an occasion of grief or dread rather than an occasion of joy. So I'm going to give you the opportunity to give. Let me read out our mobile money numbers so that you can send it to the mobile money or via our bank, the ABSA bank. The empty number is 0772-661144. I repeat, 0772-661144. And the Airtel number for the Airtel users is 0757-661144. One more time, 0757-661144. At the Christ Life Church, we are so grateful for your continuous financial support. And also do not miss our weekly Wednesday MC that is live. Make it a point that you are always with us on Wednesday. We have it at 6 in our mission community. As we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings, I want us to worship together in this beautiful song. And may the Lord bless you for always standing with this ministry. It's a blessing to have all of you give and give generously. God bless you.
Welcome the preacher of the day that is going to help us dig into the word, get your notebook, your pens and Bibles as we welcome Pastor David. Wow, what a lovely, lovely day the Lord has given us. We want to praise the Lord for yet another Sunday to come to you and I want to thank God for each and every opportunity that you give us and watch us. Even before I begin on my sermon. I request you to please like our page, subscribe on our YouTube, and also share this message. The Lord shall richly, richly bless you. And again, this Sunday morning, we continue with our series on discipleship. I do believe that you are being blessed, you are being enriched. I want to read a scripture today in the book of uh, Second Timothy, chapter 2, and verse 2. Talking about discipleship, 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. 
This is Paul talking to Timothy. This is what he says. And the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. This is basically a scripture that uh, defines the true practical meaning of the mission of Christ, which is discipleship. How do we do discipleship? This is discipleship explained. Discipleship simplified. And this is it. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. So in this scripture there is that word teach. So Paul tells Timothy that the things you've heard from me via teaching, the things I've been teaching you always and always and always, commit these to faithful men. Discipleship is about committing what you have been taught to faithful men. And the faithful men will also be able to teach others. So the work of discipleship is a cycle that is never ending. You receive it, you commit it, the person who has re received it also commits it to another and another and another and another and another. And that is how we make disciples of all nations by simply teaching what we've had from the Lord, by teaching the word of God, by committing to faithful men. The word is faithful. So in receiving instruction, in receiving the word, in receiving this word from God, we have to be faithful to commit it to others. That means if you're not committing it to others, you're not a faithful man. So discipleship equals teaching. Just that. Discipleship equals teaching. Discipleship equals receiving. Amen. So if you do not listen to anyone, you have nothing to commit. You have nothing to commit to faithful men if you are not listening. So God has blessed you with a pastor. God has blessed you with spiritual leaders. Do you listen to them? Do you listen to the word of God through them? Paul had Barnabas and Timothy had a Paul. So who do you have? Who do you have? That's the question. Who is speaking in your life that you'll be able to commit to others? Who is speaking in your life? Who is speaking? Who is giving you instruction? That's very important. And that is the whole gist of growth, spiritual growth. You cannot grow spiritually unless you have that word speaking in you, that voice speaking in you for growth, for instruction. Because we only grow by instruction. We only grow by, by, by discipleship, by listening in to this teaching. It's what grows us. Paul tells Timothy, what you've heard from me, commit. Commit. We have stayed in church for so long. You know, we have degrees in church, diplomas in church. We have all those testimonies that we have seen God doing in churches. You can talk about church for the last 10 years. But to God, true spiritual growth it's not how long you've stayed in church. To God, true spiritual growth is the ability for you to be able to commit to others what you have received. Spiritual growth to God is when you are able to do the work of discipleship. Even humanly speaking, the signs that show that someone is grown up, that someone is man enough, is when they, they produce a family. That's humanly speaking. 
But something, spiritually speaking, spiritual growth is when you are able to produce disciples. Remember, we've been talking that the work of discipleship is not for, only for the so-called men of God. So, like, we leave it to them. Ah, that is Pastor David. He will preach. He will go there and preach. No, it is for you and me. So, do you want to grow? Give back to spiritual children. Disciple. Preach. Grow someone. Amen. That is the whole incense of discipleship. Amen. And that is the obedience to the word. The real obedience is when you can be able to make a disciple. That's according to Jesus. Because Matthew 28, 20 said, teaching them to observe all things I've taught. Teaching them to obey. So this word comes for obedience. And obedience to Christ is when you can be able to make disciples. To Christ, it's, it's well with you. It is discipleship. That is the uttermost obedience. That is the uttermost of obedience. Praise the Lord. If you can simply obey that, Christ will be happy. And his glory and his kingdom will fill the whole earth in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if you're not listening, you cannot teach and you cannot commit. That's what we have said. If you're not listening to anyone, you cannot teach, you cannot commit. You cannot teach. So today I just want to, 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 to put this thing, like to put it in concrete, concrete, concrete truth. Who are you listening to? You cannot listen to everyone. It's like a child who has many parents. It's not there. You ha must have one parent. And God has blessed you with the best, the best parents. And this is the best, the, 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 the best news of this message. You don't choose your parents. It is God who chooses family for us. So God has blessed us with the best family with the best parents, with the best pastors. But do you listen to them? Praise the Lord. Do you listen to them? If you're not listening to them, that means you're not being a great disciple. Praise the Lord. It's like a child who stays in my home, but when time comes for eating, he goes to the neighbors because the neighbors prepare the best meal. According to him, praise the Lord. Because, the, you know, the neighbors have a TV. <laughs> I, can't, I can't forget those days when we were young. We never had a, you know, my dad had a black and white, black and white TV. And, uh, you know, I don't remember the age. But we had neighbors who had a, a colored TV. So time for wrestling would come. And, like, it used to happen at night around 8 there. Do you know all of us, including my dad, <laughs> would go to the neighbor's house to watch wrestling on a colored TV? But watching wrestling on that colored TV of the neighbor never made that home our home. Eventually, time ha had to come and we go back to our black and white TV. But eventually, my dad bought a colored TV. And there's a reason why the mother of a baby has the milk for this baby. Yeah. Because God made it that way. That you need a space where you are going to grow. By eating daily, daily food. Not just once in a while, excitement food. And that's what many of us do. We just go and eat a once in a while excitement food. Maybe it's on TV. Or to the neighbor's home. And we forget we have to get back home. Because home, that's where the parent is. That's where when you get problems, that's where you go to, you know, the mother takes care of you. That's where you sleep. That's where everything you, you, you use in your day-to-day -day life is. Amen. Who speaks to your life? And when they speak to your life, do you respond? I just want to encourage you, whatever your church is, whatever your pastor is, listen to them. 
Obey their instructions. Praise the Lord. Obey their instructions. You need instruction in life. You realize that if you don't have a voice speaking in your heart or in your life, there's nothing you're going to be giving out. You understand? So, because you cannot give what you don't have. So, who speaks in your life? Who speaks? Who gives, who gives instruction to you? Who gives instruction in your life? Amen. But God has placed you in, in, in a space where there's safety for you. I don't know the name of your church or the, who your pastor is, but do you listen to your pastors? Do you obey their instructions? You know, we grow in a, in a space where people are so opinionated. If you read 2 Timothy again, yeah, 2 Timothy 2, 2 to then, verse 3. Therefore, you must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So here Paul enters the word soldier into the, into the equation. And verse 4 says, No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. That means that this work of discipleship is like army. <laughs> you know, with army, it is order and order. It is either a yes or a yes. One time I, go, I, I got a job in the set house. I just went with my computers there for like a whole one month working from there. And like after three days, I was tired of life there. I wanted to go home. Because it was not my home. State house was not my home. So I told the guys, ah, me, I'm going. So they told me, what time are you arriving tomorrow? I told them, ah, any time. I think maybe 9 or 8 or 10. The guy who gave me the job, he told me, young man, the bad thing, you're a civilian. I wish you were soldier. Because soldiers don't explain. Soldiers don't think for themselves. They simply ob obey. Praise the Lord. So he told me, what time can I come for you? I told him, please don't come for me. I'll wake up and come by myself. He told me, ah, you see now, you're explaining. You're a civilian. So that's how, that's how we want to behave in the house of God. We want to behave like civilians. Everyone has an opinion on anything, everything going on. So when an instruction comes, everyone has to, to weigh in whether they will do it or they will not. But here, Paul tells us that endure hardship like a good soldier of Christ. He was saying Timothy, he's his, like spiritual son, telling him that the things we entered, this work of Christ is like a soldier. You simply have to follow. Amen. Like a soldier. So discipleship is not civilian work. Because civilian work, you just sleep when you are tired. And... But the work of Christ, the great commission he left us with, he knows so well that taking territories is not simply cheap meat. And the best way to take territories is to act like a soldier. If you act like a civilian, no territories. Forget about winning. Amen. You know an army has a command system. Yeah, it has a command system. Like here in Uganda, I think the lowest here is uh, what? Lance Corporal, that's like the lowest. And the highest is, uh, is a general. So there are, there are ranks. But when a general speaks, it is like order na order. And that is army. That is human army. So Paul is telling Timothy, you know what? Do you see how the army operates? That's how I want you to operate. If you want to take over territories for Jesus, that's how I want you to operate. Amen. Don't come here with opinions. Don't come here with a, with a, what is it called? You know, your, you know, your way of life. Or you want to do things how you want them to do. Praise the Lord. So, this is Ame. Ame has leadership. Ame has a discipline. If you, if you are not disciplined, you cannot be a soldier. If you are not disciplined, you can ask them. Me, I have a friend of mine, a soldier. But in his office, he sleeps with a, he has his, his mattress in the corner. Because any time 
a phone comes, we want you here. He, he just goes that very minute. And that's a soldier life. That's an army life. Discipline, leadership, command system. Amen. So, wh- where are you? Check yourself, even as we, we speak. Just check yourself. Where are you? Are you the person who responds? And when you respond, you don't respond in your time. You know, people want to respond in their time. That's why growth, church growth is always too slow. Because everyone wants to respond in their time, at their own schedules. Like something that would have taken one day takes like one week. Because people want to come when, uh, when I'm free. I don't know when I'm free. I think maybe uh, middle, middle October. That's when I'll be free. <laughs> that means now, if you are to go for evangelism, we shall go on evangelism when you are free, mid-October. But remember, people, they are dying. People need the gospel. People need the word. How I wish we all act like, like soldiers, like army. The other scripture is verse 5. And also if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. You see now Paul, after putting the army into the equation, now Paul brings sportsmen into the equation. You see those two things, army and sports, they have one thing in common. If you are not disciplined, forget. So the work of discipleship is like army and sports. So with sports, if you, are, if you don't have discipline, simply forget. Praise the Lord. I, I always tell you, I support Manchester United. And uh, of late, we've, we've just bought uh, the, most, the most experienced guy, you know, uh, on the field, and that's Cristiano Ronaldo. CR7, you know. When you see that, just no fire. So, but you know, Ronaldo, we have Messi, all these guys are so good. They are actually so talented, very, very talented. But you know Messi and Ronaldo, they both have a coach. Without a coach, actually Ronaldo, Ronaldo's coach is a guy who used to play with him. But now he's the coach. I can't forget the match they recently, uh, on Tuesday they played and Ronaldo was substituted by the guy who used to play with him. How can you bench Ronaldo? Who are you? Because Ronaldo is like the goat. You know goat? Goat is greatest of all times. Ronaldo is a goat. How do you substitute Ronaldo? But a coach has authority over you. Amen. So Ronaldo cannot play without a coach because it is through the coach that discipline comes to him. He cannot do all his skills as he wants. He has to follow the rules. That is what five, verse 5 says. If anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he, he competes according to the rules. However talented you are, if you're not playing according to the rules, that's not the game. However skilled, however anointed you are, if you're if you are not following instructions, you're not a true disciple of Jesus. Christ. Amen. So players have to follow the rules. Players follow instructions. Another thing they play in teams, they're n- n- not just alone. You know, some of us are, are too talented that we want to do things alone. Ah, me? me? I can't join you. I, I, how do I join even the, the choir? Me? Uh, me, I'm so talented. No, praise the Lord. God wants us to win together in Jesus' name. There's a saying that Pilots fly airplanes by instruction. You know, an airplane is too big. So you don't need, uh, you don't require much energy to fly it. I mean, if it, if it was for energy, it would get like maybe Moses Gorola and uh, other guys to come and fly airplanes. It is too huge. But it only requires small instruction to fly. Just, just, a, just simple clicks by the pilot. And that's how God wants us to grow in our Christian life. Simply following simple instructions. So that's what God is calling you to to do today. Even as I conclude, God is calling you to follow the simple instructions. Just the simple ones. Praise the Lord. Yeah, because teaching is simple. 
teaching, even Christ's instructions are so simple. Like Jesus told the guys, follow me. Just two words, follow me. One of the simplest instructions. But for us, we want complicated stuff. Uh, uh, follow me, follow you to where? To where? <laughs> That's what we want to ask Jesus. Because we, have our, we, we, have, we are so studied. So we think that our worldly wisdom equals Christ's wisdom. You will not grow. So all those, are, me, I call them distractions. Distractions are things that take you off the, the, main, the main goal. Like simple complaints, mind this one have, has not greeted me, mind this one, what not. Those things, the devil uses them to distract us from the main point, the main goal. So when you know that the main goal is discipleship, every other battle is just below there. Praise the Lord. So I see us taking territories for Christ in Jesus' name. Amen. So the last verse is verse 7. Paul again tells Timothy, consider what I say. And may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Consider what I say and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. So it's like telling him, please, don't be distra distracted. Consider everything. Just really consider. So Paul knows that if you don't consider what I'm, uh, I'm telling you, you will not gain understanding. You will not. So do you consider the word of God when it comes? Do you really consider? Considering is like putting that utmost attention Attention, like, eh, what is our next assignment? Let us all go. That's how we consider. Praise the Lord. So Jesus does not want to leave you the same. He wants you to grow. He wants you to be a, a real nice disciple to him. A disciple who will disciple others. You cannot disciple if you are not discipled. It's like we shall just be rotating all around. So, who do you listen to? Who do you follow? Who do you respond to? Who do you consider? Who are you discipling? That is all what Christ wants, wants us to do. That is Christ's mission for us. Amen. Maybe lastly, I want to read something I wrote here uh, from a book I've been reading. That book is called um, Tell Them. Yeah, the book is called Tell Them by Doug Howard Mills. And somewhere he says, he talks about the, the missionaries who went to West Africa. And this is how he talks about them. The missionaries had to become farmers, traders, builders, in order to survive as missionaries in a foreign country. Because to these guys, missionaries, it, me, discipleship was like a do or die. So they had to come to a community and pre like, not actually pretend, but be farmers, be traders and builders. So that they get opportunity to take the message of Christ in the community. You understand? So the other statement he writes, if European slave traders were prepared to risk their lives or health roaming the shores of West Africa for money, then the Christian miss missionaries could risk their lives for the souls of men. Missionaries came in the time of slave trade. But as those slave traders risked their lives for, for money, these ones risked risk their lives to save, to save souls. They were like, really, like it was, an, I mean, it was a do or die. The work of discipleship, the mission of Christ is a do or die. It's not simply something we do in our, you know, our free time, our chilling moments. No. Amen. Lastly, this is the, now, uh, yeah, the story in the book. In December... Four missionaries arrived at uh, Christberg. They were, German, they were Germans, and their names are there. And uh, within a few months, three of them had already passed away. You know, these guys had come to do mission work, and just, there are four. But in only three months, three of them had died. Three of them. And the fourth one also followed them to the grave soon later. So, <laughs> had it not been for for the slow pace of communication, the mission committee would probably ha have given up the whole idea. However, before the news of the last death arrived at the headquarters, the mission board had already decided 
to send reinforcements. Like you send guys to go for mission work and those guys die. But when like the news comes to the headquarters, these guys say, hey, how many are remaining? One remaining, let us send more to reinforce him. Like these guys were like saying, no, the gospel of Jesus must take over all Africa. What's your mind about the mission of Christ? Is it something that you take and you give, you give, you give the real, real intensity it deserves in your heart, or you simply take it like pastime? It's an opportunity for us to always come and share the word of God with you. But you know, if the word of God comes, it requires that you respond. It requires that you obey. If you do not obey, you will always be going through cycles of failure, cycles of, you know, uh, not like stagnation, no, no growth, fighting battles you are not supposed to fight because you are putting your attention in wrong things. Amen. I feel the Lord calling us again to go back to the real, real call. And that is the call, the mission of Christ. That is discipleship. Praise the Lord. Can we pray together? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I pray for everyone that has been watching, listening in, that you shall touch them, that you shall touch their hearts, O King of Kings, that they shall consider, consider your instruction. They shall consider your wisdom, O King of Kings, Lord. For so many times we have used our own wisdom to simply define your instruction, oh God. But your instruction gives life. Your word gives life to us. It is life. If we simply just obey, everything will be sorted, oh God. I pray that you shall help us to obey your word. That you, you shall help us follow you, oh God, to the dot. And we shall go out and reach out and preach to the world this matchless word of life, oh King of Kings. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. God bless you.